So if you get your brake line, and normally they have these fittings on here, and if you compare it to your old fitting, and then you find one that fits, it looks like it'll fit. It looks like the right size. It looks like the threads will mesh. This fitting here is the correct size. It has cleaner threads so we can see that it looks like it'll fit in and thread in. It's very close, but if you look closer at the threads, it's hard to see they aren't meshing perfectly. If we take this and take it on this thread gauge, this is a millimeter thread gauge. If we put it on, you can see that fits perfectly into the 1.0. So this is a 1.0, but this, if I try to fit on the 1.0, it just doesn't fit as nicely as this in the 24. It's the 24 right there. So these threads are slightly different, but if you try to put this in, it won't thread in. We've done that before and you'll have to totally It'll totally halt the brake job because it's like why is it not going in? It's because this is just a slightly different thread and you need to make sure you have the exact thread So this one's the metric and this is the standard American This is a 3 8 24 and then this is a 10 millimeter 1.0 So if we take the American standard thread and put it in the metric here you can see it'll thread in, and it'll thread in easier, but you can see how it shakes. That shaking won't hold pressure. The brake fluid will leak out or hiss out. What we need to do is thread in the correct thread, and it, it will thread in tight, but still glide in smoothly. You don't want it to be shaking around. You can see when we thread that one in, this is tight, so we want to just take it in carefully. You can see that glides in smoothly, but tight, and that's the type of thread that we want, where it'll hold the pressure and really press firmly against that double flare. The light, you can really see the difference. These threads don't mesh perfectly, because they need to. You can see there's light going through, and that makes a big difference. If I take the old fitting and the new fitting here and I put these together, you can see they mesh perfectly and you almost can't even see the light behind it. That's what you're looking for, it's a perfect fit. Whenever we bought this nickel copper line at the local auto parts store, they don't sell it with the right fittings. We went to two auto parts stores and they don't have the right fittings on there. So we have to kind of build the brake line. So if we take the old brake line from the car, and we'll kind of just place it there. What, we'll, what I'll do is try to get the right size by moving it like this. And then we have the size right there. We'll go about another two inches just to give us some slack. We can then cut it there. Then we'll not use these fittings, take them off, and put these new fittings that were also at the local auto parts store, put those on, and then those will screw in to the pipe that we need. So that's the main thing, you just wanna get the threads correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the pipe off here and then we'll double flare it and I'll show you how to put it on the car. So since we're gonna be flaring it anyway, I'm gonna put it in the flare tool here and just put a little bit of oil on the tool. That'll keep it operating better. And I'll just clamp it in a little bit. We switched out the uh, wing nuts for some 13 millimeter bolts. It makes it so much easier to tighten down and actually get it tight where it won't slip. Now we can, <laughs> came right off, it was about to break. So now we have that line all broken off. We can just take like a countersink or a ream and clean it up. I'll clean it up a little bit with a file just to knock the burr off. That's good. So make sure to take off the fittings and put the new ones on. You'd be surprised on how easy it is to forget that. Just make sure they're in the right position. This is facing the correct way and same with this one. This is the uh, flaring, the double flaring tool adapter. 
we put this right on the surface here and then we can level this to the same height as that and that's why it has that just that thickness at the bottom there so we'll set this down now with that at the correct height we can go ahead and tighten down the bolts and then we can put the yoke on and then we'll flare it now they do come with wing nuts but if you can't get these tight enough or if you can't tighten them enough this will slip down and you'll have to redo your flare so make sure that you get these tight if you don't replace the lug nuts just tighten these down now what we did have happen to us was on this one the lug the wing nuts broke we tried tightening them down with pliers and we tightened them too tight on the cast aluminum and it just broke so we put the bolts on and i like them a lot better. it is really easy to break this little piece here off so just take some oil and put it on because you never want to put side to side pressure and this will just make sure it slides a little bit smoother then we'll take the yoke and put it right on there and now we can start tightening it down and this nickel copper really flares a lot easier than the steel we're gonna put oil on the threads here grease would be even better but right now oil will work fine and just keep tightening this until you feel the tool or the adapter bottom out it'll hit the bottom of the tool and you'll feel a point where you can't go anymore so then once you hit that point and tighten it up back it off then we can take this out and it's not broken <laughs> and you can see right now we have half of the flare done so now we'll put this back on and run the cone down back on to the flare and what that'll do is push everything back into the cone shape and this will finally finish our double flare so we'll tighten this up <clears throat> real tight back it off and now we have the double flare and that looks real nice so now we'll loosen these bolts up and swing this one out to the side and you can see we have a nice double flare on there. The connector up, and that seat's really nice. I'm happy with how that turned so now out. Now we'll rough the bends in, and then once we get it on the car, we can really get it to the right um, bends. But you just wanna bend this really slowly and carefully, being careful not to crimp the, or the line. If you crimp it, <laughs> that's the end. You gotta get a new line. So just take your time. So now we have all the bends roughed in, but whenever you're, before you start bending it, make sure both the fittings are at the end because you aren't able to get the fittings through the radius. So if you have a fitting here, you'd have to unbend it and it would just be kind of a pain. So make sure they're at the end before you start bending. This nickel copper line is super easy to bend and work with by hand and it never rusts out. This was only a dollar more than the steel line and I think that's definitely worth it. So once the line is in the car, you can see why all the bends are right where they are. So we're just kind of tweaking this until everything is where we want it. So we'll just keep tweaking until everything is in the right place. So this is pretty close. We have all the bends tweaked in, maybe just a little bit in some other areas. So this is looking basically like it's the right shape. Now we can go ahead and put the hose back in the bracket and screw everything together. And then we'll put the bracket, there's a little clip there in at the end. When everything is fresh and clean, those threads really go together nice and we can just thread this side in really easy. Now to tighten this on here, we're gonna take these vice grips that grab in three points so it evenly distributes the pressure. We're gonna clip it on just like that and tighten it up just a little bit, a little bit. 
There we go. Now we can take the wrench and really make sure this is going on tight. <clears throat> that's nice and tight on there. Yeah, now, now that we know that's gonna hold and do the same thing over here. So I have everything tightened up. I have the clips in and it's not touching anything. It's not touching the rotor or the suspension because we don't want something to rub against it and poke a hole in it. So now we can go ahead and pump the brake and see if it fixed the leak. Now we'll go ahead and pump the brake and pump up pressure and watch to see if there's any leaks anywhere in the hose. And it looks pretty good. The only way to break these bleeders loose is with a nine mil or a socket. This just so happens to be a nine millimeter. It feels like it's about to fit on, but it doesn't quite. So let's just kind of tap it on. Not too much. And also you want to be careful not to break off the end of the bleeder screw. We did that on the other wheel. So now we'll just try breaking it loose. There we go. That one came off. This one is already kind of loose. Now we can take that off and then wiggle it off this way. There we go. So let's put a little bit of grease around the nipple or the bleeder screw here so that air won't be able to suck back in so that you won't be introducing air at the bleeder because sometimes it does fail here. So with the grease packed around there, we're able to put this back on, break it loose, and do the one-man method. The magnet is a great idea, like you could just stick it to the spring, but it's not nearly strong enough to be able to hold a whole bottle of brake fluid in there. It just kind of barely sticks on, so we'll have to glue a stronger magnet on. Now we'll go ahead and loosen up the bleeder screw, and go ahead and pump the brakes. And you can see all that air is coming out and we're really getting all that air out of the system. So once all that air gets out, you'll see the brake fluid starting to run up to the bottle. Now we're seeing a lot less air in the system. If we look closely at the pipe, we've been pumping it a few times and I'm not seeing any air flowing through here. So I think it's okay. So I just filled up another whole bottle and I didn't see any air go through the tube. So we know we have all the air out. So we just bled the back and we have all the air out. And we double checked the front because overnight we lost a lot of fluid and we wanted to make sure no air got in the system. And those front wheels were good. So we're gonna spray all the bare metal here with some spray paint just to try to keep it from corroding because not everything is the nickel copper. So just make sure you get a good coating everywhere because you don't want these steel pieces to rust. Now let's go ahead and spray this down here just to make sure this doesn't rust as well. Now we have everything down on the ground and we can go ahead and take it for a test drive and see how well it works. Okay, so now it seems like it stops well. The brakes seem to be functioning properly and I'm happy with how this turned out.